The Arizona Cardinals have the ability to bolster their roster to contender status. I'm Bo Brock, and that's what's coming up on today's Locked On Cardinals podcast. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Cardinals, your daily Arizona Cardinals podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, sir. Rise up, Red Sea. What's going on? It's Bo Brock, half of the roster today. Alex Clancy is off. The guy's just a busy man these days. Regardless, follow him on Twitter at Clancy's Corner. Follow the podcast at Lockdown AZ Cards. Make sure you're subscribed to this YouTube channel. You're subscribed, of course, to Apple Podcasts. Review us, rate us. We appreciate anything you can give us. I'm Bo Brock. Give me a follow. B O B R A C K. I mentioned it, the Arizona Cardinals today might have um, stumbled upon a player that could be available that has the opportunity to boost their roster from where it is right now, probably a fringe playoff team, to contender status. That doesn't often happen in July, as we're weeks away from training camp. But the Arizona Cardinals, it could potentially happen. I'll tell you who and and what it would take. Plus, uh, with that, there was a little bit of a ricochet, as uh, I've been talking about this on social media uh, there, Cliff Kingsbury, the Arizona Cardinals head coach, took a little bit of a ricochet shot. Arizona Cardinals head coach has now become the most polarizing topic of the organization these days. And uh, after I mentioned the word contender and the Cardinals together, Cliff Kingsbury was kind of the victim of what happened next. I'll get into that conversation. Plus, what are the odds Kyler Murray leads the NFL in passing yards? Probably, I would just say right out of the gates, not good. Not good. What are the odds that uh, DeAndre Hopkins is going to lead the NFL in receiving yards. 1,400 yards last year. Uh, Could he he do it this year? Uh, Never done in his career. He's led the NFL in touchdown receptions before. Uh, But as far as leading him in receiving yards, never happened. This episode of Locked On Cardinals is brought to you by Locked On Fantasy Football. Winning your league starts with the right data. Vinny Iyer of Sporting News provides you with the edge you need in fantasy football. Locked on fantasy football daily podcast, just like locked on Cardinals all year round, all your fantasy team needs. It will never fail. Subscribe to the locked on fantasy podcast, wherever you find your podcasts. So let's get into this conversation right now. And I appreciate everybody tuning in and please hit the like button. If you're watching on YouTube, Uh, it was Mike Silver on Twitter Earlier today, a lot earlier, as we record this podcast, a lot later than usual. Usually it's in the morning, but uh, got delayed, and I appreciate your patience. Sorry for any inconvenience. But um, Mike Silver took to Twitter, and he was following up on earlier rumors from the offseason that uh, Miami Dolphins cornerback Xavier Howard is not happy in South Beach. This is what Silver said. Excited about my new Washington NFL contributor gig. Blah, blah, blah. Here's some journalism. There's a lot of trade chatter concerning Dolphins all-pro corner Xavier Howard, who led the NFL with 10 interceptions in 2020 and is unhappy about his contract. He continues here. Howard, who signed a five-year, $75.25 million extension two years ago, wants a new, improved deal in the wake of a stellar 2020 season. He's not likely to get it from Miami and would likely take at least a first-round pick plus the willingness to pay up to land him. Carries on one final note from Mike Silver. There are several teams, all in win-now mode, pondering such a move. If no one steps up to meet Miami's price, Howard, who skipped the offseason program, could try to force the issue by holding out of training camp. He could be fined up to $50,000 a day in that scenario. Stay tuned. Uh, so several teams in win now mode, uh, as far as the Arizona Cardinals and you look at what their off season has been, they're a team that has tried to, they're in win now mode. They have the Kyler Murray rookie scale contract. 
They went after guys who were, you know, in their prime or, you know, beyond their prime, as according to, you know, football years. Guys like J.J. Watt, 31. Guys like Rodney Hudson in his 30s as well. A.J. Green, another 30-year-old. James Conner, not that old 25, but uh, some mileage on his tires. And, of course, a guy that's not necessarily known to be a uh, absolute just uh, – he, he's he's been – pretty much limited to 10 and 13 games the last two seasons, respectively. Not a guy who is uh, always healthy, never healthy, actually. But Xavier Howard is a guy that the Arizona Cardinals, absolutely, no doubt about it, need to be in. Look, if the Miami Dolphins make Xavier Howard available, if they can't come to some sort of solution, if they don't renegotiate and they can't make him a happy employee, the Arizona Cardinals need a trade for the all-pro corner. It's it's that simple. I mean, that's what, when you look at the Arizona Cardinals roster right now, and you, you even before the NFL draft, you looked and you said, okay, one of their biggest glaring needs is the cornerback position. Sure, Malcolm Butler signed a deal to kind of become the successor of Patrick Peterson as he exited on a one-year $10 million deal with the, Miami, uh, the Minnesota Vikings this past year, offseason. Um, but uh, th there's still kind of a glaring need there. Tight end, probably another one of them, but there's nobody the caliber of Xavier Howard at the tight end position or any of their other needs. Maybe if you look at the, uh, the, the middle of that defensive line, maybe some beef, but look, a move for Xavier Howard, and we'll get into what it would cost, and Silver already kind of speculated a little bit. It would bump the cards from a fringe playoff team to instant contender. The Cardinals defense, without a doubt, would become the strength of the organization. As Frank Schaub of Yahoo Sports pointed out the other day with his team preview, the Cards were a top 10 defense. The Howard trade would join the additions of J.J. Watt, Malcolm Butler, Zaven Collins, the first round pick, plus reincorporating Chandler Jones, who missed all but five games last season with the biceps tear. You add him back to this defense. It would be the official return of the no-fly zone that we really haven't seen since 2015. Remember that? Patrick Peterson, you had P2. You had the Honey Badger, Tyron Matthew. You had Tony Jefferson, Gerard Powers, and good old nine-and-a-half finger uh, Rashad Johnson. Remember that Rashad Johnson? The tip of his finger fell off. But uh, the Arizona Cardinals, look. They've lacked any opportunistic cornerbacks for far too long. This is how bad it's been. I pointed this out on social media, on Twitter, at B-O-B-R-A-C-K. Only the Detroit Lions had less interceptions, have less interceptions, 21, than the Arizona Cardinals, 25, since 2018. No team, only one team, I should say. The, the brutal, futile Detroit Lions just a complete, absolute dumpster fire, or worse than that, like Portalette that's on fire, have less interceptions than the Arizona Cardinals since 2018, since the first season after Bruce Arians exited the organization to retire for a season. Xavier Howard, during that stretch, has 18 picks. Alone. 18, the Arizona Cardinals, 25. Last season alone, Xavier Howard had 10 picks the Arizona Cardinals had 11 as a team. 11. Trading for Howard would make the Cardinals legitimate contenders. He's the uh, pro football focus's fourth ranked outside corner. Something that, you know, they absolutely need. They're going to rely upon Butler, who they signed to a one-year deal. And they're going to rely on Robert Alford, who hasn't seen the playing field for two seasons. He's been under contract for the Cardinals after being released by the Atlanta Falcons. And Look, those guys are, are fine, but they're not Xavier Howard. Uh, you know, he's, uh, as far as average guaranteed salary per contract year, he ranks 20th. Byron Jones, who's his teammate, came over on a lucrative deal from Dallas. He's third. Howard right now makes $5.4 million. So you could absolutely make it work this season for the Cardinals. Negotiate a future deal, an extension, pay him handsomely, pay him what he deserves, what the market shows he deserves, and, and you'll be fine. Jalen Ramsey, you know, regarded as one of the top corners, if not the top dog at the defensive back position, he says Xavier Howard is a top five corner in the NFL. 
They don't just become available. So what would it take to acquire Zayvon Howard? I mentioned Jalen Ramsey. He was traded just a couple seasons ago, mid-season from Jacksonville, forced his way out to Los Angeles. First off, the Arizona Cardinals need to get the full court press going. DeAndre Hopkins needs to just get up on social media, get on Instagram, get on the IG, get on Twitter, get some Photoshop going. Maybe it's even some pic that we don't know about of the two of them together, kind of like J.J. Watt or the picture that he had with uh, Julio Jones in a failed attempt to get Julio on the squad. Get Michael Bidwell. We all know that he, he likes to brag about being a pilot. Fly down to South Beach with General Manager Steve Keim. Don't leave until a trade has been pulled off. Just do it. Just show up on uh, Chris Greer, the general manager of the Miami Dolphins' front lawn with a boombox or uh, a Beats pill these days. You're not, nobody has a boombox anymore. And uh, play music until they're willing to negotiate. When we talk about Jalen Ramsey and the deal, it was a pair of first-rounders and a fourth-rounder that went from Los Angeles to Jacksonville. And that's a really high price tag. But this, I, I don't know if Xavier Howard is going to net that. But it's going to be steep. It's going to have you kind of uh, grit your teeth a little bit. But it's worth it. You start with a first. You probably throw in a third. Very expensive, right? First, a third in 2022. Cardinals don't have a fourth. I would have started there. But it's time to join that exclusive NFC West club. What club is that? It's club no first rounder in 2022. The Niners, they already traded theirs away to trade up in this past draft to select Trey Lance out of North Dakota State, third overall. The Seattle Seahawks, their first rounder next year, that was part of the Jamal Adams deal. And then you've also got, uh, of course, the Los Angeles Rams, who's, who've been, they've been parting ways with, uh, whether it was the Jalen Ramsey deal or the Matthew Stafford uh, swap for Jared Goff. It's just, uh, if you want to get behind that velvet rope of club NFC West, you got to give up that 2022 first round pick. And look, this is what winning organizations do. It would be a mistake after making all the signings, all the acquisitions that they did this offseason, if they weren't willing to just push all the chips to the middle of the table. You got to go all in because you're already pretty much, you're, you're short stacked. You're kind of on tilt. And this is your money plate. You've, you've got your ace up your sleeve that the rest of the NFC West teams don't have, that some other contenders don't have. You've got your first-round pick. And if it pans out, if you get Xavier Howard, the likelihood of that first-round pick being a late first-rounder, it's pretty good. And you're saying, well, what about the offense? The offense was, that was the reason the Arizona Cardinals were on the outside of the playoff party last year looking in. And you're right. I know the offense sputtered down the stretch. They scored less than 20 points in the final two weeks combined against the San Francisco 49ers and the Los Angeles Rams. Both pretty solid defensive efforts. Robert Sala, the defensive coordinator for the Niners, had his team ready to play in week 16. And of course, Brandon Staley, uh, both guys now head coaches. He had the Rams as a, the, you know, the top defense in the NFL last year. He had his guys ready to play. And they took advantage of Kyler Murray barely playing in that contest, and they won. But look, this is what I believe, especially Kyler Murray going into his third season. With the duo of Kyler Murray and DeAndre Hopkins, that's enough. Especially with the defense that you know they potentially could have. That duo is the type of a duo, a type of a tandem, that could get it done with a pedestrian supporting cast. I honestly believe that. Now, it's not ideal, right? But... You can find a way. If a guy like Rondell Moore pops or A.J. Green uh, kind of re has a career resurgence or is just you know puts up some decent numbers opposite Nook, I think you're going to be in a good spot. Couple that with an absolutely just ferocious defense, just nightmare fuel for opposing offensive coordinators. J.J. Watt, Chandler Jones, Marcus Golden. The potential of the young bucks in the middle of this defense, Zayvon Collins, your first rounder. Isaiah Simmons, your previous season's first rounder. Buda Baker, Malcolm Butler, and Zavian Howard. If Miami makes him available, the Arizona Cardinals need to aggressively pursue a trade and make it happen because it would make them instant contenders. Please like this video on YouTube. Make sure you're subscribed to Locked on Cardinals, both on your podcast, wherever you find that. 
of course, this YouTube channel. Make sure you're following along at Lockdown AZ Cards. Follow me at B O B R A C K. So I put that out there that Xavier Collins, I'm sorry, Xavier Howard. That would be my biggest issue with this trade is that you've got a Xavier and you've got a Xavier. But other than that, it's that's a good problem to have. If the Arizona Cardinals, I said, if they went out and they got Xavier Howard, it would make them instant contenders. And it, Rick, it was it caused a ricochet shot that hit Cliff Kingsbury. Cliff Kingsbury <laughs> has become the most polarizing topic of the entire Arizona Cardinals organization. I'll explain why. It's locked on cards. This episode of Locked On Cardinals, it's brought to you by our friends over at betonline.ag. So the Suns, they lost yesterday. The series of the NBA Finals all knotted up at two games apiece. It heads back here to the Valley of the Sun, the Phoenix Suns. They become the favorites once again. After being underdogs in the last two games, and rightfully so, they didn't cover the Suns, now four-point favorites in game five. It's going to be a huge matchup. This is uh, this is going to be big as far as the rest of the series now. Has it swayed back? Phoenix Suns still the favorites to win the series. You think the Bucs and Giannis, they've got all the momentum? Go to betonline.ag for all your sports action. Baseball season in full swing. It should be back in action after the All-Star break here this weekend. Get all the news. Odds and info for all your sporting needs. Before the next pitch, tip basketball. Go to BetOnline on your laptop, your cell, and check out all the great sporting news, sign-up bonuses, and contest information. That's right, contest info, sign-up bonuses. If you head over to the website right now, betonline.ag, your mobile device, sign up today. You'll receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts. Use the promo code Locked On when signing up. All right, we're back here. Locked On Cardinals, part of your Locked On podcast network, your team every day. Let's make this simple. If you think that the Arizona Cardinals should be willing to part with at least a first-round pick for Xavier and Howard, hit the like button on this YouTube video. It's that simple. It doesn't have to be – you don't have to get into it. If you want to, leave in the comments what you think is a fair asking price. But I think uh, you're probably staring down a first and a third. And right now, at this point, where the Arizona Cardinals are, it would be well worth it. It would absolutely be well worth it. So I put out on Twitter when I saw the news from Mike Silver, uh, I saw a little um, Pro Football Focus said that uh, the Arizona Cardinals, Austin Gale of Pro Football Focus, said that uh, Xavier Howard would be the best fit. Is It's with the Arizona Cardinals. And I pointed out that the Lions only have less interceptions than the Cardinals since 2018. And uh, Howard has 18 picks during that span. And last year alone, Xavier Howard had only one less pick than the Cardinals as a team. Um, and then I mentioned that it would make the Arizona Cardinals legitimate contenders. because, And I honestly believe that. But with that came a lot of the Cliff Kingsbury haters out there. They started chirping a little bit about their disdain for the Arizona Cardinals head coach. And... If you've listened to the, this podcast or you've watched, you probably know that I – here's how I, what I think about Cliff Kingsbury. I think the jury is still out on Cliff Kingsbury. I, you have every right to be skeptical that Cliff Kingsbury can at some point figure it out. And you, ha you have every right to believe that he's overmatched and maybe in over his head. But the Arizona Cardinals made the decision to move off of Steve Wilkes after the 2018 season. They said, okay, look, Wilkes isn't the guy. He's one and done. And we're going to go with a guy who's going to take our, our offense, which is absolutely putrid in 2018, just over 14 points per game. Mike McCoy was just, he was running the old Big Ten, three yards in a cloud of dust offense. He set him back to the Jurassic era. And now Cliff Kingsbury was brought in after the Sean McVay success in L.A. He was brought in to be this offensive-minded guru. But he had one of the more inevitable uh, rises that anybody's ever seen to becoming an NFL head coach. He went from being fired from his alma mater just months before, not having any success in the Big 12 at Texas Tech, going 35 and 40 as a college coach, getting a job as the offensive coordinator for USC, 
and then becoming a head coaching candidate at the NFL level and being hired by the Arizona Cardinals. Here's where I'm going to play a bit of a devil's advocate. The Arizona Cardinals, by making that hire, pretty much bought in on being patient with Cliff Kingsbury, the head coach. That they couldn't be quick on the trigger like they were with Steve Wilkes because of everything Everything was on the table. We all knew about Cliff Kingsbury, that he was this failed college head coach. And if they were going to go with him, that patience was going to have to be preached. And after a colossal just fall at the end of the 2020 season, everybody thinks they know who Cliff Kingsbury is, a head coach. As brutal as that stretch was for Cliff Kingsbury, and pff, I mean, look look at that hat. I don't know uh, if you're watching on YouTube. He's wearing an absurd hat that I think my grandmother uses or wears the same one while she's gardening. But he's wearing a floppy bucket hat. But Cliff Kingsbury, I, I, if you're not going to be patient, if you're going to be willing to just fire him after, you know, two and a half seasons, I, I don't know. I, if you look at the complete resume of work, I don't know if it's, it's necessary – necessarily fair and I, look you're not we're talking business here right we're talking the nfl you either can coach or you can't but i i don't think that there's enough to tell us that cliff kingsbury is a bad coach like i said cliff kingsbury took over a roster that was historically bad the 2018 cardinals were ranked one of the worst rosters of the decade from 2010 to 2020, the 2018 Arizona Cardinals, who had three wins, had were ESPN at one point ranked them worse than a winless Browns team. The roster. And it was it was putrid. It was horrible. Beyond Patrick Peterson and uh and Larry Fitzgerald, there just wasn't any talent in that locker room. Chandler Jones, I sorry, I'm sorry. Chandler Jones was on that squad as well. But it was it was a brutal team especially on the offensive side of the football. So then Cliff comes in. They start to make moves. They move off of Josh. Their, their freaking quarterback was Sam Bradford. Sam Bradford, the biggest criminal thief for stealing money in NFL history. You'd be hard-pressed to find anybody, maybe Albert Hainsworth, but Albert Hainsworth at least you know did something before his big deal, before he swindled Dan Snyder and the Washington football team back way back when. But... Sam Bradford is the greatest thief and criminal and fraud in NFL history. And he swindled the Arizona Cardinals one last time. He was like Danny Ocean, one last job. I got the Cardinals. I got them for less than $16 million, three magical starts, and uh, I'm out of here. Horrible. Bad team. Bad team from the coaching staff to the roster. Cliff Kingsbury takes it over, and they go from three wins to five wins we find out that Kyler Murray can play at this level. The next season, 2020, the Arizona Cardinals come out of the gates and go 6-3. and three. They're leading the NFL in total yardage as far as offense side of the football. They're just playing a lot better. It looks like, you know, and I would bet at that time, I mean, sure, you'd seen a couple things as far as challenges. We remember the San Francisco uh, timeout call before the half on Thursday night football that resulted in them getting another down and scoring a touchdown. And it was brutal for the Cardinals. If you remember, if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. But Cliff Kingsbury, like to say that, okay, they go six and three, first nine games of the season, and then they fall apart at the end. And you're like, okay, well, Cliff Kingsbury is, he's in over his head. I don't, I just, I don't, I don't buy that. I think that's such a knee jerk reaction. They went from 14 points per game, 14 plus points per game, which is absolutely insane that an NFL team could only produce 14 points per game, to about 23 points per game, to over 26 points per game. The win totals have increased, and look, it's easy to improve off of three wins, and it's pretty easy to improve off of five wins. But then, you know, you go to eight, and this is this is it. This is what... I'm saying right now that this is the season that we're going to find out who Cliff Kingsbury is. Can he, can he hold his weight at the NFL level? Now, I, I obviously am, am skeptical to believe that, yeah, can he do it? But I'm not sitting here. I'm not going to start 
to st- tell him to step into my office because he's effing fired just yet. I just, I don't, I think that that you, you can't set that precedent for the organization. You've already been quick to pull the trigger on these coaches before. Nobody, d- despite all the talent that you're going to have in the locker room, nobody's going to want to come coach you. Everybody says, my co-host even says, this, he wants Brian Dable from the Buffalo Bills. Brian Dable. Let me tell you about Brian Dable real quick. Since he's such a hot commodity, the Buffalo Bills offensive coordinator, because of what he was able to do with Josh Allen and uh, their their rise to the top of the offensive ranks in the NFL last year, uh, just uh, a great job from Brian Dable, and like he deserves to be, you know, in the conversation for um, for head coaching jobs coming up. But Brian Dable has been in the league. It's not like he's a, a newcomer to the league. He has in Kansas City in 2012. His offense was 31st overall on the offensive side of the football. I'm sorry, 30th overall. As far as points per game, they're 32nd. In Buffalo, his first season with the Bills, it was 30th overall. The previous season in 2019, they were 23rd overall. Josh Allen was a guy that uh, not a lot of people were high on. You saw the tools. You saw the size. You saw the physical ability, the athleticism. But was anybody buying Josh Allen's stock, you know, going into the 2020 season? I don't believe so. Brian Dable, Josh Allen, Sean McDermott, you know, obviously the uh, the array of wide receivers, the trade for Stefan Diggs, pairing him with John Brown and good old Smoke and, uh, and Cole Beasley. That was just a, they became a force on the offensive side of the football. But Brian Dable is just as unproven as Cliff Kingsbury. You're going to bring in another unproven guy. And that would be the third in a row. Or people are pounding the table for Eric Bieniemy. Eric Bieniemy has Patrick Mahomes, Tyree Kill, Travis Kelsey, Andy Reid. Also has a big, big old hand in play calling in Kansas City. We know just as much about Eric Bieniemy as we know about Brian Dable, as we knew about Cliff Kingsbury, as we know knew about Steve Wilkes. It's just, I, it's, it's the, it's, it's the definition of insanity, and. You can have your reservations. You can be skeptical about Cliff Kingsbury, but what he has done is he took the the Arizona Cardinals out of the doldrums of the NFL as far as offensive play calling, and he's he's gotten it at least back closer to par. And you know, I a, after playing just horrendous horrendous golf to use a golf analogy, I mean, be way over. Cliff Kingsbury, despite his horrible hat that I have up in my graphic, I think. Uh, Needs just you just need to give him a little bit more time, just a little bit. I know what the win. I know the window of a Kyler Murray rookie contract. Its its expiration date is drawing it's drawing near. But Cliff Kingsbury and, and I'm going to get into it. like I've I've done some deep diving as far as Cliff Kingsbury's you know coaching record dating back to Texas Tech and what he's done at the NFL level. He, he's, he's only won three games against teams over 500 in his career. Buffalo on the Hale Murray, and then two wins over the Seattle Seahawks. Other than that, he's, uh, he hasn't beat any. He's 3-11 and 11 against teams that are over 500 in the, in the NFL. It's not good. No. 10-6, and six, 10, you know, 10 and 6 against teams that are over 500. So, taking care, relatively taking care of, uh, of, and winning games against teams that he should. There's some bad losses on last year against Detroit that stands out. That was a five win team and another loss against a five win team last year against Carolina. You know, you can point to the end of the season, but those two games happened in the first five of the season. And those were probably the worst losses of the season. And it happened when the Cardinals were actually um, performing well offensively. It's Locked On Cardinals, part of your Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Bo Brock hanging out with you. Alex Lance will be back in the fold tomorrow. We'll continue our uh, Friday conversations with our guy Johnny Venerable from Revenge of the Birds, who are churning out incredible daily content over at revengeofthebirds.com. Our friends over at Bet Online, they've put out the odds. Kyler Murray, where does he where what are the odds that he would actually lead the NFL? in passing yards. In DeAndre Hopkins, a more realistic bet that you're not just lighting money on fire with, what are the chances that what are the odds that he actually finishes atop the receiving leaders yards wise? 
in the NFL. We'll get into that before we get out of here and get on to uh, tomorrow's edition of Locked on Cardinals. It's Bo Brock. Give me a follow on Twitter at B-O-B-R-A-C-K. I got to tell you about the best tasting protein bar on the planet. You know what it is. It's Built Bar. Built.com. They've got you hooked up right now to where if you go to Built.com and use the promo code LOCKED15, you're going to get 15% off your next order. Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar on the planet. No doubt about it. And for the summer, for a limited time, during the summer, you can get the delicious orange and the delicious strawberry, not in the regular rotation, all summer long, along with the OG flavors that you know and love. Coconut, cherry, barcia, raspberry, mint, brownie, double chocolate, salted caramel, cookies and cream, and German chocolate. There's a favorite taste for everyone. And not only are the bars delicious, they have 17 to 18 grams of muscle packing protein, 130 to 80, 180 calories, four to five grams of sugar, and just four to five grams of net carbs. Did you know that it's the uh, official protein bar of the U.S. track and field team? So when you see us take home the gold medal, they're fueled by Built Bar. Go to Built.com. Use the promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. That's LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. All right, final segment here, Locked on Cardinals. It's been fun to kind of do this solo. I haven't done a solo podcast in a long time. Uh, I did it f- quite a bit last year, and then Alex and I were able to get back on the same page. Alex swamped today as far as his day job's concerned, and uh, he'll be back with us tomorrow. So will be Johnny Venerable, and uh, we're going to be talking to Johnny about uh, the potential of Xavier Howard, and uh, we're going to be talking about some maybe some training camp uh, position battles. It's going to be a fun one. You don't want to miss it. Johnny Venerable always brings it each and every Friday right here on Locked on Cardinals part of your Locked On Podcast Network. So uh, Bet Online is our betting partner here on the Locked On Podcast Network. And uh, the Arizona Cardinals, you know, they didn't have anybody that was really atop the league leaders in 2020. Like you had, obviously, Kyler Murray. He led quarterbacks as far as rushing touchdowns. He had 11, 37 total touchdowns. DeAndre Hopkins, he was up there as far as some of the league leaders in receiving yards. But uh, he wasn't the, the top dog. 1,400 yards in his first season with Kyler Murray. Pretty good considering they didn't have a training camp together. They've got a full offseason now. They've got training camp preseason coming up. Uh, well, it, it, It'll be interesting to see if they can put together something special. But as far as your passing yards leaders, Kyler Murray's been never a guy that really puts up a ton of passing yards. He's a guy that's gone over the 300-yard passing mark a couple times in his career. I don't believe Kyler Murray has a 400 yard passing game under his belt but I'll I'll fact that check that before I get out of here but I don't think so I mean he especially the air raid offense it's not something where he's he's throwing downfield that often we know about the knock on him as far as the intermediate throws just looking at his game logs in his career obviously in two seasons he hasn't gone over 4000 yards that's for sure 39 and 37 yard uh, 100 yards uh, respectively but Kyler Murray as far as his um his career high as far as throwing the football and, and uh, completing for high yardage, he hasn't done it. He hasn't done that. And, of course, you take into consideration his ability to run the football. But uh, Kyler Murray, as far as his his career high in passing yards, uh, it's uh, about just, what is it, three fifty, just under 350. But, um, yeah, the Arizona Cardinals... I just don't think that you're going to find him there. Now, he's going to be on, on the list, right? 25 to 1. He's right around with Lamar Jackson as far as throwing the football. Deshaun Watson's just uh, at the same odds, and so is Derek Carr, Baker Mayfield. I think that's pretty kind. I think, uh, you know, Deshaun Watson, he led the league in, in passing yards last year, didn't he? But uh, I think that, that you have to enter in whether or not he's going to play this season. That's the main knock against him. So I, I don't think. You'll, you'll get that with Kyler Murray. That's just not his game. It's just too well-rounded. And uh, the Arizona Cardinals, if they're throwing the ball enough for him to lead the league in passing yardage, it, uh, it, it might be concerning for that offense because it's not rolling like it should. Um, and they probably were chasing points more often than they should. But um, DeAndre Hopkins is a guy that's in the conversation as far as the favorites as a receiving yards leader. 
Uh, DeAndre Hopkins, 10 to 1. Stefan Diggs, 8 to 1, is your leader in the clubhouse as far as favorites. Calvin Ridley, who's a trendy choice with the exit of Julio Jones in Atlanta, he's 9 to 1. So is Tyreek Hill. Devontae Adams, 10 to 1, along with DeAndre Hopkins. Travis Kelsey, the tight end, at 11 to 1. AJ Brown, 14 to 1. So is DK Metcalf, Julio Jones, Justin Jefferson, Terry McLaurin. You want any of this action? If any of those guys are intriguing to you, betonline.ag. I think that a guy like DeAndre Hopkins certainly has the ability to do this. He's getting the targets. Uh, We saw that uh, the big splash plays could be a little bit higher uh, rated for a guy like Nook. If you'd like to see maybe, uh, you'd like to see more plays downfield for Hopkins, D-Hop, and and Kyler Murray. He's a first down machine, led the NFL in first downs, but he's getting 160 targets. I don't expect him to have a drop off as far as targets are concerned from 2020 to 2021. But the opportunity is going to be there. You know, is it going to be, is he going to get freed up by the rest of the guys on the wide receivers, uh, in the wide receiver core enough to where he can make those those big impact, big splash plays that that we just talked about? So DeAndre Hopkins, obviously the smarter money. I don't think Kyler Murray is worthy of a bet. Um, start. We'll start to see where he st- comes in as far as rushing yards this season. Uh, and then as far as running backs, there were no running backs from the Arizona Cardinals that showed up or registered to be the what the odds were for becoming the rushing leader. Of course, Derrick Henry, 3-1. to one. I'm surprised you actually get, uh, you can make money off of Derrick Henry these days after a 2,000-yard season. Dalvin Cook at 5-1, to one, Nick Chubb at 7-1, to one, Christian McCaffrey at 8-1. to one. You can all find those odds, betonline.ag. Johnny Venerable is going to join us tomorrow. Alex Glancy is going to be back. Make sure you're following along on Twitter at LockdownAZ Cards. Follow me at B-O-B-R-A-C-K. What do you think the Arizona Cardinals should be willing to part with if Xavier Howard becomes available from the Miami Dolphins? First round pick, a first and then some. Let us know in the comments. Let us know on Twitter. We'd love to hear from you. Of course, subscribe to this podcast, review, leave us a rating. We appreciate anything you can give us. Thank you for listening. We will talk to you tomorrow. Have a great rest of your Thursday. Apologize about the late, the lateness of this podcast. We'll be back at our normal time on Friday morning. You know where to find us. It's the Lockdown Cardinals, part of your Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.